Well, we know we don't have any real fun until we get to word problems. So let's take a look at this guy. So we've been in this whole section, this whole unit, about writing equations of lines. So what we have here is that the cost of a tuition, or the cost of tuition at a community college is based on the number of credit hours that you take. And we know that to be true. The more you take, the more expensive it is. And for a lot of places, it forms a linear relationship. So here's what we have. It says when someone enrolls for two credit hours, the cost is $145 but it's going to cost $415 if they enroll in seven credit hours. So we want to come up with a, with a relationship with an equation that models what's going on here in this problem. To do that, we need to understand what ordered pairs look like. So typically, we do x and y. But x, in case you have forgotten, x is what we call the independent variable and y is the dependent variable. So when we say x is independent, that's usually the thing that we have control over. It's the thing that we get to choose. And once we choose that, the y value then depends on what we chose. So if I look at this, I've got two things that vary. I have the number of credit hours that I take, and I've got the cost. And which one of these do we usually have control over? Well, when you sign up for classes, you are the one who's controlling the number of hours you take. So you sign up for classes, and then the tuition is based on the number of classes or the number of credit hours you take. So in this example, what's independent is going to be the number of hours that you take, and the dependent part is going to be the tuition. All right. So keeping that in mind, let's see if we can write our two ordered pairs. So one ordered pair says that when you take two credit hours, the cost is 145. And then there's another ordered pair, which is right here. It's $415 for seven credit hours. So even though it says 415 and then seven, we understand that we've got to go with the hours first. So that's seven, and then that's 415, like that. So in order for us to write an equation, we've got two ordered pairs, we know what we can do. We can find the slope that goes between these two guys, and then using the slope and other formulas that we have, we can find the b value. Put those guys together, and we can talk about what the equation of the line is going to be. So let's start with that. Let's start with the slope. My slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's write that out using parentheses correctly, just like we've talked about. So you have 415 minus 145 over x2 is 7 and x1 is 2. All right. All right, so we've got 415 minus 145 over 7 minus 2. Fortunately, there weren't any you know, negatives that we're plugging in, so this is pretty simple. 415 minus 145 gives us 270. Over 7 minus 2 is 5. 5, why did I write 2? Has that ever happened to you guys? You say one thing, but you write something else. You can't even believe it happened. 7 minus 2 is 5. I think I was looking at the 2 and my brain just had an issue there. Alright, so that means 270 over 5 to the division there is pretty simple. You get 54. Now what does that 54 mean? And this is where I want you to understand not just how do we do this, but what does it all mean? Well, if you think about the problem, in this numerator, this 270 was a measurement of money. In the denominator, this was a measurement of hours. So this 54 that we found out is the cost per credit hour at this community college. Okay, so now you've got a slope and you understand what that means. Let's find the equation of the line. Going back to y equals mx plus b. Now, I'm going to use, oh, there it is. I'm going to use the smaller numbers here. I'm not afraid of the big ones, but there's no point in me going big when I can keep it nice and small like this. 
So I've got my slope, I know an x and a y, I just need to find that b value. So my y value is 145, slope is 54, and my x value for this court for this order pair is 2. Alright. Nice simple math. 54 times 2 is 108. We solve for b by, by subtracting 108. 145 minus 108 is 37. All right. So you've got your slope. You've got your. Uh, me, why do I keep saying this to my slope? You've got your b. You've got your slope. Let's put these guys together. So when you put this together, you come up with a formula. Basically, it says y equals 54x plus 37. So if you know the number of credit hours that you're going to take, you plug it in. And this is going to be a formula for you to figure out what your tuition is going to be. So here are some things I want you to know. We already mentioned that the slope is going to be the cost per hour, right? The 37, what does that mean? That means that no matter how many classes you take, there's always going to be this $37 amount extra that's going to be tacked on to your tuition. And usually that's something like a registration fee, just like a one-time fee. Whereas this $54 is going to be scaling up. So the more classes you take, the more you're paying for tuition. So each credit hour you take is another hour of resources for the university or the college. It's more money that has to be paid uh, to the instructor uh, for technology and all kinds of stuff. So all that's wrapped up into that $54 per hour uh, fee. So there you have it. Some real world examples. And it's always fun to take that, you know, whatever college you're at, uh, take some, some data points and see if you can come up with a formula for figuring out what the, what the cost of tuition is going to be. Sometimes it's scary, trust me.